Kristen. And I'm Bethany. And this is Looking for the Middle, the Christian girl's guide to modern dating. We're here to help you date with confidence while honoring the Lord and to show you that your identity and contentment are in Christ. We're going to give you the tools that you need to date successfully and be set up well for success in a godly marriage. If you've ever felt like you didn't really belong with any of the extremes in dating today, well, you're not alone. Neither did we. And that's why we're here looking for the middle. Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the season finale of season seven. Can you believe we're already here? I feel like we just started, honestly. It is weird. Well, and I think it's partly because we actually did a really good job of staying ahead of recording this season. We weren't quite as last minute. Now we're down. We're under the gun now. But um, so it kind of seemed like it flew by because we weren't really in real time, which is weird. I don't know what I think of it. I like it from a calendar standpoint, yeah. but I could not keep up with what was happening. Yeah, me either. Like, oh, or, what? I would call Bethany like, what episode is dropping this week? Like, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, yes, I have mixed feelings. I mean, I'm sad that it's over too, though. I know, but we're happy because it's almost Christmas. Yes, it is. It's just I a few weeks away. So uh, first thing then of note is that 12 Days of Couch Cast starts next Monday. What is this thing? This, the, this comes out on the 8th. So, so yeah, Monday the Monday. 13th. 9th and Monday. Yeah, 13th. <laughs> so 12 Days of Couchcast starts Monday. So check back then. We'll have a Couchcast every day for 12 days leading up to Christmas Eve. And y'all have sent some really fun questions in. So we've got some new ones. We're going to pull some from the, the not the archives. That's not the right word. The the list. The list that we've ha- we already had. So it's going to be a mix. So we're going to do that. Um, two quick things and then we'll jump in to today follow us on social media if you don't already it's lftm underscore podcast on instagram that is the best place to follow us um everything from instagram pushes to facebook but we don't actually check facebook as much so if you want to chat hang out come come over on instagram we're there and the second thing if you haven't already make sure you sign up for our newsletter that goes out every week on thursday after the episode on wednesday you can sign up through the link in our bio on instagram or just through our website, lookingforthemiddle.com, there is a newsletter button. You can sign up there. So do those things. Yes. But without further ado, I'm trying to like cut down these intros. Like sometimes they get so like when I'm editing. It's like seven like, minutes Why in. Are we at? No, it's like 12. We've done 12 we minute intros. Was 16. <gasps> and I actually put in the description of the episode. Like if you don't want to hear us go off on 12 rabbit trails, <laughs> skip to minute 16. <laughs> So I'm trying to like oh, man. cut it down. So question of the day, yes. go, 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 go. Okay. I feel like I ask this question of the day every year, but what okay. is one thing that you're really hoping you get off of your Christmas list? <laughs> I actually saw somebody this the other day that I'm like, Ooh, you need something to get me for Christmas. I want slash need. Okay. So I, when it comes to like gifts, Melanie and I were talking about this the other day, like I love getting gifts. It's fine. But as far as like, it's a, it's not my primary love language at all. Same. Yeah. And so I appreciate it. But what I normally want for gifts are very practical things that I need that I don't have to spend money on it. Like that's kind of my approach to what I want. So anyway, the thing that I really want slash need is I need a new like car mount for my cell phone. For your phone. And so like, you know, they make the ones that go in the cup holders, but my cup holders are like way back beside, like I can never really like see my phone. It's way back beside That's true. Your me, cup you holders know? are kind of far, far back. back. Which I like. Yeah. I actually like it for like drinks and stuff, but it's not good for the phone. And I don't, I mean, when you live in the South, you do not put anything in an air vent that's going to block air circulation. Heck no. You just don't I made that it. mistake before and it was so awful. I, so I need one that's like a like a on your dashboard. On dash, but not a magnet because I never like, because I have a loopy case and it won't stick. The magnet uh, won't stick to my, the outside of my case because there's not room. But it won't hold through the case. So I need a dash mount cell phone holder that's like the retractable yep. you know, thing that I can stick my phone in. And I really hope someone buys it for me. I mean, I have a recommendation for one because that's what mine does. And I love it. Ooh, would now, you send me a link to I it? Will send you link. I will pass it on to this person. Yes, I will send you the link. Because mine, so one of my friends got one and they put it on their dash because they have yeah. my car doesn't have room on the dash because my yeah. windshield so slanted so it but it can either mount to your windshield or oh. the dash based on how your car yeah. is but you'll have room because okay. of the way your car's made but i love it okay. and it works so great yes, so please send it i'll send me. you the that link really help yes send a friendly reminder but what yes. yeah what do you want what's the one thing um, you're hoping you get oh gosh i had a hard time making a christmas list this year really yeah and i normally don't 
kind of. Um, <laughs> ever since I've had a job, I have a hard time making Christmas cookies. If I want something, I just go buy it. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to think, like, I need to go, like pull up my list. I don't even remember. I, I make it and then I don't remember half of it, which <laughs> is good because then I'm surprised. But then at the same time, honestly, this is going to sound so boring, but like I want um, some more like gold jewelry. Oh, yeah. So I've asked for like some different earrings and like rings and stuff for just from Amazon. Nothing like super pricey, but. I've just been like, oh, I kind of want some different because I wear the same. I get in the habit of where I yeah. wear the same, like two pairs of earrings <laughs> and then the same bracelets. And oh, crap. I wonder if I still have time to add that to my, tell my mom. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a moment. I normally get a piece of jewelry with my word for the year on it. Oh, yeah. And I didn't ask for that this year and I just remembered. So I need to, which oh, my, yeah. ironically, my word is remember, um, which is <laughs> so <laughs> terrible. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that makes That's me hilarious. process better. But yes, so jewelry probably would be like just more like casual yeah. stuff. Because I don't, only time I get dressed up is for basketball games right. and church now. I don't ever yeah. leave my house. <laughs> I did ask for a lot more comfy clothes, <laughs> like really? loungy clothes. Oh, that's funny. Because I'm like, I'm here all the time because I yeah. work from my couch. So, but yes, <laughs> super basic. Okay. Fun times. Yes. Let's segue then into our season finale content which is actually so the obviously you've read the title if you're listening to this hopefully <laughs> or you just trust us that much and you just tap and you don't know what you're listening to we're talking about what is love and this is actually an episode we have had on the docket for at least four seasons now I mean it's yeah. and it always kind of gets pushed because we're like this is a really this can be a really heavy topic yeah. it's one we didn't want to gloss over wanna, yeah do it justice and and because I think uh, Something, I don't know, all things go back to your theology and mm -hmm. what everything you do in life reflects who you think God is. Yeah. Whether you think, you know, it just does. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't have time to get into all of that. So even when we're talking about things that aren't overtly spiritual, those are still going to relate back to what do you believe about God and how does that impact your life? So if we're talking about flirting, we could be talking about how to start a conversation online. Like it's not like we're going to say, okay, now turn to this chapter and verse where it tells you what to do that. Like it's not in scripture, but how you approach those things and how you approach anything dealing with other people reflects what you think about God. So that's one thing, but something like this, what is love that is very closely tied to what you believe about God, what you believe about what he has done for you, what you believe about, how your life should look in light of that. And it's also something that is at its core, very countercultural. I mean, our culture is obsessed with love, but there's not much about it. That's biblical a lot of times. And so we didn't want to, yeah, rush through something or treat something flippantly that shouldn't be. Um, so now we're going to tackle it. Yeah. Well, and I think to your point, our culture talks so much about love, but it's such a different love than what mm -hmm. we know as believers, which we'll get into. But it's like we're talking about something, but have completely different definitions. Yeah. And so that's so what we're really we, almost not talking about. The yeah, same thing. exactly. Yeah. And that's what we want to differentiate, because when you're just talking about dating and, you know, kind of on a surfacey level it's really easy to define love the way that culture and the media mm. and hallmark movies and everything <laughs> else defines it as which is honestly a lot simpler yeah oh it, totally it makes is. it sounds and seem so easy it's like nope not at all like love requires so much of yeah. you well and i would i would put out there that th that is why those movies stop as soon as they have quote unquote fallen in love Mm. because their definition of love the world's definition of love more or less stops there yeah you know because the that's the the peak of the feeling is yeah. at that moment so you cut it there and it leaves the viewer or the reader or the whoever in their mind thinking that is how all of life continues from that point forward mm. that point is how it all goes because what do they say after that? And they all lived happily ever happily after. Ever At after. the end. Then there's nothing else of note. It just kind of stays like that. And so that's why you see so much disappointment and so much 
frustration is because that's what you're led to believe is the ideal and that's what you're led to believe is the the perfect relationship but then when you get into real life it's not going to look like that and so it seems like something is wrong when in reality you're not dealing with normal that's normal and you're just not dealing with normal in a biblical way yeah that's true you're not dealing with love like you're not viewing it like you said it's not how it's depicted in the Bible. No, not at all. And it makes me think about when you see all these like really old couples that have been together for decades. Yes. And they always say like, oh, I love so-and-so so much more today than I did on the day we got married. Uh-huh. And you think that, oh, you know, your wedding is like the pinnacle of your, you know, relationship of like, oh, I just love this person. I couldn't imagine loving them any more than I do right now. And you're like, that's only in the beginning. Yeah. And so many. But it's different. Like it, it's such yeah. a different thing because you learn. I mean, I say all the time, like love is a choice or love is broadcasted as a feeling. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to come back. But like, <laughs> it's a choice. And that's not, you know. That doesn't sell, I'm sure, no. in movies. Like, no one wants to be like, uh-uh. oh, that sounds awful. But not awful, but, like, that doesn't sound romantic. Yeah. It sounds hard. And yeah. we don't want to talk about it if it's hard. We want to talk about it if it's just so easy and whimsical. And, you know, coming from the, you know, optimistic, overly hopeful, rom-com loving, <laughs> you know, host yep. here. Like, I'm even saying that. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, it's a choice. It is a commitment. It mm-hmm. is a... And it's a commitment to selflessness. It is a commitment to not getting your way. It is a commitment to compromise. It is a commitment to all of these things that don't make you feel any sort of way, really. In fact, they're all going to be things that go against your natural inclinations. They're all going to be things that make you have to keep your sin nature in check. And yeah, like you said, that doesn't sell. Um, because in any society that is not pursuing Christ, <laughs> the God of that society is self. Mm-hmm. And to make me feel how I want to feel and to make me get what I want. And that is held up as the ultimate goal. And when that doesn't happen, we have been conditioned in our society to we'll just get rid of the thing that is keeping you from doing that because you matter the most. Yeah. And that is up to and including your spouse. Like this idea that marriage is just a piece of paper is prevalent. I mean, it's everywhere. There's because they aren't looking at it from the standpoint of this is a covenant we have made between us and God. Like that's not even, that doesn't even factor in. They don't even know, like they they don't even know to think that. Yeah. It's not even on the radar. And so marriage is just as just as disposable and consumeristic as anything else. And that's where that idea of love will get you. Yes. I agree. I agree. So we'll come back to a lot of that. Okay, just, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, we're just going to. Well, the outline is a suggestion, people. Let's be right. honest. If you haven't figured that out by now, if you're uh, if you're new, welcome. <laughs> um, we're so buckle sorry. up. Yes. <laughs> but we'll come back to some of that in a little bit. But first, we've gotten a lot of questions over the past however many years we've been doing this. <laughs> Four seasons. That yes. We've been to do this. Yes. <laughs> about love. And so we want to start off by tackling those questions because y'all know we like to mix the theological with the practical Mm -hmm. so we want to start with the practical talk about some of the questions y'all have sent in about love and how to approach it in relationships and dating and then we're going to move into more of the theological spiritual side because after all it is christmas and the greatest most loving gift ever given is what we're celebrating this time of year so that's kind of the game plan moving forward so to start the first question we're going to answer is how do I know that I am in love with the person that I'm dating? And I think this is probably the most common one because yeah, love seems so abstract. And well, I've asked. This. Yeah, you can't. How do you know? How because do you know? You, because you know what the answer is to this. Oh, when you know, you know. It's the dumbest thing ever. And I'm like, that makes no sense I whatsoever. I That's need not, like yeah. a 14 point list of if you feel this and you do this and you think this way, <laughs> yeah. then you love the person. Yeah. When you know, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's the most useless piece of. Yeah, well, and anyway. I'm I'm really like. I don't know. Cause I've felt like I've known before. Yeah. Well, and I think if you have been in a place where, yeah, you have, you've been in that, Oh, when you know, you know, and you're like, Oh, I guess I know. And then it doesn't work out or it ends. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, I guess I didn't know. 
so so now like you 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 second guess your own judgment in that yeah it's like you when you know you know but i thought i did and i didn't so maybe i don't know when i know right oh that's just then what, do you what, do? A, what a spiral yeah, um, exactly. but i think well and i think too we get this question a lot from people who are just kind of getting started in dating yeah um but they're in a really serious relationship um or even like high schoolers which yeah. i know i was telling bethany i'll get i'll get vulnerable on here it's the christmas episode what do i have to lose <laughs> um so i was telling her before we started recording i have told five different guys that i have loved them okay since i was 15 told okay. my told my sophomore high school boyfriend <laughs> that i loved him which he said at first and i just kind of was like oh i guess this is when i say it too so that was just not but of the five the fi- the the most recent two are the only ones I feel like I actually loved. Yeah. The rest of them I'm like, nah. No. And but I didn't know that right. until not that you have to like date a bunch of people to compare it, but I feel like Yeah. I don't know, like I had to look back and I'm like, I didn't because there was one guy in high school that I had a very, um, I wasn't supposed to be dating him. I've referenced that a couple times on here. I was more just infatuated with him. Yeah, you loved the idea of loving him. Yes, absolutely. And I can say that as a um, first-hand observer yes. to this um, absolutely non-relationship yeah. or whatever. It was it was a, <laughs> it was a train wreck. Um, <laughs> let's just call it what it is. Her parents were right is what she's beating yes, around the bush to say. Yes, <laughs> they were as painful as that is to admit for any human being. My parents were right. Um, Isn't it so annoying how often that seems to have been the case now looking back? Seriously, my uh, grandfather told my dad when he turned, I think, 20. 22 he was like it's amazing how much smarter your parents get once you turn 22 (laughs) my dad's like crap yeah you're right (laughs) um but yeah like I just but I think what changed was I realized that so much I I had bought into the culture's depiction of love which was so based on feeling and it's this ooey gooey he makes my heart flutter and I can't like get enough of him and um I just want to be around him constantly which those are all good things but like that's not at all the the yeah what's the word I'm looking for the all-encompassing version of love I guess um yeah it shouldn't be what leads yeah it like those feelings should follow your choice and your commitment to that person yeah like and when you do that those feelings will follow and that's part of like when we get into like so why it's such a tough conversation of like getting into like the whole thing of like being attracted to someone it's like and we've done enough episodes on it go listen to them if you want the full fleshed out version of that but that's why it's hard to say like okay yes you want to be attracted to the person and that is important but that's why it's not the most important thing because, okay, if that, like, what are you defining as love and what are you defining as being important if the physical feelings are at the top? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because, and that's what I would really, because again, as much as I would love to give you a concrete list of here, eight things to let you know if you really love the person, I can't do that for you, but no. I can ask you to think about you know when you describe what you like about the person that you're with are a lot of those things based around the way they make you feel yeah because again like feelings are great feelings are part of it I want you to have feelings for somebody if you have no feeling and it's all like it feels very um what's the word platonic yeah i guess or just like oh this transactional this, yeah this makes like yeah this makes sense for us to be together to yeah <laughs> like it mm. like it makes sense on paper yeah it makes sense on paper but I've, there's no feeling and i've been in that yeah and it is just for and i just want to yeah. rabbit trail slide for a second for those those of you who may find yourself in that situation or may have been in that situation it's a weird mental thing because I have dated the guy that made total sense on paper. Um, Kristen knows like we've talked about, he did. He absolutely did. hundred percent. I'm like, this makes sense. This should be quote unquote perfect. Like we totally fit. But then in person, like there was nothing like I, 
I do. I said over and I said, it just feels very friendly mm-hmm. and you can try to muster up that feeling, but there was nothing. And it, I ended it over that. And that's okay. That we're not saying that you are committing yourself to a life lacking in feeling and not having feelings for this person that you're going to be married to. Not that at all. I don't think that is ever what God intended marriage to be, but what he did intend is for two people to commit to each other, to serve each other, and that that is his good way for marriage to look. And do you trust him enough to do that first, knowing that the feelings will follow? And they'll follow pretty quickly. We're not yeah. talking about, okay, you've been dating this person for a year. Now you have to get married for a year. And then after that, then you'll start feeling something for them. I'm talking a matter of if you even have a separation, like, most of the time, it's going to be the other way around. Yeah. Your feelings are going to be there, and you need to rein that in and mm-hmm. make sure you're making commitments when you should. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you said that, because there's... You you want there to be a balance. I'm not saying don't have feelings. Yes. Or, or suppress your feelings, but there's got to be more to it than that. And if you find yourself just kind of like, oh, well, I love, like, this about his character, and mm-hmm. I love that, like... Um, seeing how he prioritizes his faith, how he serves, how he treats me, how he treats other people, his kindness, his selflessness, his, you know, all of that stuff. I love like helping him. I love like taking care of him where I can. I love like all of, all of those things, the things that are going to last when all the, which I still hate that this happens, but all the ishy gushy, you know, hot and heavy stuff subsides. If there's stuff there. Yeah that's going to that's that's what's gonna establish yeah and you said you hate that you you like you have to admit that that goes away basically but and i'm gonna say this as someone who's never been married who like you know but i'm gonna say it with a lot of authority like i really know absolutely because i really i think i do because i think it's biblical that when you are loving someone as we're talking about here that's not based on a feeling once that infatuation and that honeymoon period and all of that wears off it's not being replaced with something less than I would, mm. I would venture to say that when you have set a foundation built on a biblical love, when the feeling, you know, I don't think the feelings ever wear off, compl- but like you're talking about the honeymoon phase, the ooey gooey, all of that stuff. When that subsides, the foundation that is there far surpasses that. Yeah. It's not That's that true. wearing off for something that is less than it's That's something good. wearing off for something that is different. But like we've said before, Different is not bad. It's just different. Yeah. And that is what lasts and that's what binds two people together. And I think that is far better and far greater than the hallmark infatuation that you have. Yeah. Again, well, yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I'm I'll sitting here, back. I'm sitting here thinking of like, I remember this one time when the guy I was dating, we were sitting on the couch watching a movie. We had just eaten microwave mac and cheese for dinner okay if that's not romance i don't know, I know. what it is i don't have an ounce of makeup on and we're just like chilling and he looked over at me and just kind of looked at me and I'm like <laughs> yeah what? what are you looking at what's wrong and he was just like i love you and i'm like oh my gosh and i'm like i have nothing to offer you <laughs> <laughs> this is not the like I don't look my best I, we're not like doing anything super you know romantic or exciting or like I just microwaved you mac and cheese <laughs> for dinner like I didn't just get, but it was just this sweet like oh like you just yeah and and it was this really sweet moment and I'm and now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like oh I like I loved that moment uh-huh. and it wasn't this you know big hallmark moment or whatever yeah. and so i think that's a good way for you to pray of like you're not getting anything less than and there's there's something really like deep and intimate about yeah. that as you grow so all of that to say look pat not i'm so so weird how to phrase this but like don't look past your feelings but like look past your feelings i think i don't know i feel like as Bold and outspoken as the world is in saying, follow your feelings. I think we have to be just as bold in saying, no, don't. Mm. And so I think, you know, yes, you want to phrase things well, because lots of people are listening, coming from lots of different backgrounds and lots of different everything. So you want to phrase things well, but I think you are fine to say, no, don't trust your feelings. Don't rely on your feelings. Look past that. 
Um, because relying on that is our natural inclination. So we need to, I think you're fine to say that, to boldly okay. say, no, okay. look past your feelings. I yeah. think that's fine. Okay. I think it's good. Okay. Um, good. Can I add one tiny little thing? Even yes. Even though we kind of closed that point out already. Yes. Just, you started it out by saying, when you're talking about the person and what you love about them, do you primarily describe how they make you feel? And we went way off then on the feeling part, but I want to touch on a different part, the you part of that sentence too mm. about when you're describing what you love about that person is most of what you're describing have to do with you mm. what they do for you what they do like is it a self-focused thing of like i love them because they do things for me yeah because that will also go away with time yeah <laughs> um it, it, so is it because of what someone does for you or is it a selfless thing like yeah you love their character you love their pursuit of the lord you love what he's doing in their life you you see the call that god has on their life and you want to come alongside that you know we've talked about before like when you're evaluating okay do i love this person do i want to get married you know i always say and i think you've said too like i'm looking for someone that i serve the lord better with together than either of us do apart mm. That so so if that's what you're looking for, what do you see in this person that furthers that goal? Yeah, there's your answer. Yes, that's good. That's good. I love that. Okay, so we've talked about how do you know if you're in love with someone, and we have talked about it. So <laughs> we're gonna move on. Yes. Next question: When do you say I love you? My my quick answer is once you have established the answer to that first question. Like we just talked, what's your, to that point, like we have just talked about it of like, yes, I want to commit to serving and sacrificially loving this person probably forever. Um, I'm not saying don't tell someone you love them until you get engaged. That's yeah, not what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I, there are people that say that and I think there's validity to that to an extent, but I, I'm not one of those people. No, anyway, me neither. But it's not after you've been on four dates. Yeah, no. Um, I was, <laughs> it's a surefire way to freak somebody out. I <laughs> watching an episode of the office michael saying and this girl and he had called a conference room meeting because he needed help on like i love out these episodes i um, love them so much and he he said she hasn't even said i love you yet and they were like well how many dates have you been on he was like seven and i said it after the second one. Oh gosh <laughs> so that's not let's what we're not talking do about that here. um but my i didn't I say that this was my short answer? I'm yes. doomed. Yes. Um, <laughs> but no, once you've established that you are, you love this person for the reasons we talked about before, like you, it's a biblical love, then tell them. Yeah. Um, once he's told you first. <laughs> oh. I, I would never say it first. Okay. That leads us to our next question. I know question. it does. And I wasn't trying to like do that, but I think it's fine if you want to say it first. I would not. Okay. I also said I would never ask a guy out, and I've done that. Yeah. So maybe this is just the next thing. I don't know. But This is a growth in your dating journey. As me. of right now, I would not ever say that first. That's funny. I agree with everything you just said about when to say I love you, so I don't have nothing to add to that, so we can keep oh, going to that. Okay. Like, I feel it's not a quick thing, but I also don't think, like, oh, you need to be dating for nine months before like if it takes nine months then fine but fine. i don't think there's a formula for this it's a when you've established your answer to question one yeah <laughs> basically I, and that's gonna vary that, per yeah. person um now i will say as a caveat to that unless you're like in high school and you're you're still like i feel like you tell someone you love them and you're moving towards that when you're in a place to do something about it to like you like want to commit to this commit person. And get married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you cannot do that, then I don't, I don't think you go down that road. Yeah. Um. Now, there's caveats to everything. So I'm saying, <laughs> other thing, like if you're younger, you're in high school, you can't, you, you have, you're not getting married anytime soon. Then I don't think you move down that road. But if you are at a, you're of a marriable age. And you were with someone, you were pursuing, getting to know them better, and it has been a while. And I'm saying, yeah, six, nine m months plus, and you're regularly seeing this person, and you're pursuing, getting to know them for the purpose of, do we want to get married? 
if it's been that long pl- or longer and you're still going, huh, huh, I don't really know. Yeah. One, either, y- y- why are you still, like, I, we're saying bold things today. Yeah. I would tell someone, why are, y- why are y'all still yeah. together? A- and there may be a valid reason. It may be saying, okay, well, we have this issue and this issue. We're working through these things and I- great. But if it's just, we're getting to know each other, we're going along, I don't really know either y'all aren't suitable for marriage with each other and you need to break up or two you need to reevaluate how you go about getting to know someone Hmm. because if you are looking to pursue a potential marriage one day and you've spent nine months getting to know someone to that end and you don't know enough to know whether or not you could love and commit to them what have you like what are the things you're getting to know about someone that you can't figure that out in nine months? Yeah. Is that fa- valid? Yeah, you think? I think so. I think and I so. I feel like that sounds harsh and I don't mean it that yeah. way. And I know if you've been dating a guy for 10 months and you're just not there, but you are like, there are exceptions, but as a general rule, I think we, I guess the point I'm making is I think we go about getting to know things about people that don't matter. Yeah. And so it takes a really long time when there's all this big stuff that you should have found out from step one. Yeah. Or, or step three. Yeah, Don't step start three. at step one. Yeah. <laughs> That's just too early to figure out big stuff. But like step two or three. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'll give the same, you know, uh, disclaimer we give a lot around here. When the advice we give can only go so far in your life because we don't know your situation. We don't know you personally. Exactly. So if you're, if you've got these questions of, okay, like when do do I tell this guy, do I love him? I'm trying to figure this out. Talk to somebody who knows you well, who knows what's going on in your relationship, a mentor, a parent, um, close friend, whatever your small group leader, whatever that looks like for you and process that with somebody who you can give more details mm-hmm. to, because we realize this is very one-sided advice, um, where yes. we're at right now. So we really encourage you to do that. We, we never want this we want this podcast to be a resource for you with, as you're dating. We never want it to supplement the counsel and advice. And no, we do want it to supp- supplement. We don't want it not to supplement, replace. Not replace. Thank you. That's what I'm... We don't... Yeah, we want it to supplement it. We don't want it to replace what godly advice and counsel and wisdom you can be getting from somebody who you know personally yep. and who knows you and your situation personally. Absolutely. So I'm glad you said that. Yes. Well, you know, <laughs> I've been doing this a while. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I mean, I'm not, but yeah. and we're done. All right. Wrap it up. <laughs> Kristen gracious. I haven't had any coffee today. Shockingly. If y'all no, can't she's tell down three day at Coast. No, don't let, don't just, let her. It's just my first one. It's my first it's one. Only my first well, one. I mean, it's noon. It anyway. is noon. Okay. All right. Next, next question. question is, which Bethany alluded to is, is it okay for me as a girl to say, I love you first guys, if you're listening, this is, we're asking this from a girl's perspective. Cause I would say the majority of the time the guy says it first. Yes. And I, I think he should. Is it okay? As in, would it be sinful for you to tell a guy you love him first? Probably not. Yeah. And I, I joked earlier about, oh, I also said I'd never ask a guy out. Um, but I don't think these are apples. I don't apples think to apples. Apples to apples. And here's okay. why. Telling a guy, hey, I'm interested in you and I'd love to go get coffee to see if there this might be something goes anywhere. there. Yeah. Is very different from saying, I love you. I want to commit to you. I want to create a life with you. That there's a lot more leadership in that like future looking there's a lot more um i don't know i just think that there's a lot more to that than there's oh i'm just gonna ask this guy out for coffee yeah and i think i that's what i'm saying would it be sinful i would not go that far i think as a man guys if you're listening you should want to lead in that you should want to be the one to say i am taking charge of this unit this potential family and i'm going to lead in because it's saying i'm going to lead in defining what love looks like i'm going to lead in saying i love you and this is how it looks and so i think there's more to it than just a flippant oh i love you yeah absolutely yeah Yeah, i know that's not what you're saying but i so i just i think i think there's a little more weight to this than because it's easy to kind of compare those two. Oh, yeah. asking a guy out versus saying I love you first. Um, so I would say 
I would say that. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. No, what that's true. I think, I think it's fine. I've done it. Yeah. And I'm not saying and, it's wrong. Oh, no, 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 no. I think my, my, because I was very hesitant in the yeah. moment of like, I've never done this before. <laughs> um, and just a million things going on in my head. But I remember thinking it was right before I said it. Mm-hmm. I was like. I feel this way Uh and I want him to know that. And I don't want to hold that back just because he hasn't said it yet. And so, um, and he, um, he, don't worry. He said it back. It wasn't like, (laughs) (laughs) it wasn't one of those like cringy, like, and he's like, Oh, thank you. Um, but that was more my thinking of, I didn't want to hold back me sharing with him how I felt just because I'd never said it first before. Yeah. And so that was kind of my lens. But I see, I think you have very valid points um, that you just made. But I think it, like you said, I don't think it's a sin thing of like, oh, if you say it first, no, you're wrong. Like, you, I don't think that at all. Um, but I know it's also, it's when I, when I told my, um, cause I went, shopping with my mom my grandmother my sister the day after i told him oh yeah and they knew they'd known it was probably coming pretty soon and so i was like yeah like we told each other we loved each other yeah and they're like oh my gosh you know my family (laughs) and i was like yeah and i said it first my mom's like Kristen. (laughs) she's like dang and i was like well i felt like i want like it was important i wanted to say it and so it is i realize it's super unconventional i guess but um but yeah i think it's it's funny how i never would have thought i would have done it yeah kind of like the again like it's not the same as asking a guy out but it's one of those things where i was like oh there's no way ever uh-huh. and i was like oh no never I, mind I, I, never mind we're, <laughs> we're we're doing it this is happening <laughs> oh my gosh but yeah so Okay. Yes. So then, okay. That was a very clunky ending, but you're last, welcome. <laughs> last question that we get from you guys that we'll answer here, and then we'll kind of go into a little bit more of the, just like looking at our example of love. And like Kristen said, and the, the greatest example of that is obviously Christ coming to earth. And that is what we're celebrating here at Christmas. And so just kind of taking a deeper look into that some, but before we get into that last question here is what if he says I love you and I don't feel it back? Whew. God bless your soul. Yeah, I feel like potential secondhand embarrassment for anyone. Like I just just thinking about this, I don't even know this has happened to anyone, and I am already like embarrassed. Not embarrassed, what's the right word? Anxiety. That's yeah. a better word for having to go through this. Yeah. Cause um, you've kind of kind of been in this situation before. Ish, not really. I I was in the second half of it where I okay, I don't feel it, but then I kind of was getting the feeling that he was like he was about to go there. Oh gosh, like panic, panic. Yeah, and so I like I kind of, I mean, obviously I don't know for sure because I redirected the conversation, kind of a oh squirrel. Yeah, <laughs> I was much smoother than that, but uh, yeah. I felt so there's a there's a strategy yeah. you see it coming and you don't feel it just change the subject move the conversation in a different direction yeah I don't think he realized that's what I was doing like it wasn't like I'm saying it wasn't like that kind of awkward thing but I yeah just, that's where it seemed like things might be headed and I was like oh no 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 so yeah. that's as close to, as I've gotten to that yeah thankfully I th- that, that would be yeah. a really tough thing yeah I think the biggest thing here is there are a lot of ways you could handle this situation. The one way you shouldn't handle it is by saying it back. Cause you feel like you have to. No, I, I agree. I have, again, that's what happened. My sophomore high school boyfriend was like, Oh, well he said it and he's nice and I like him. So sure. And I was like, no. Um, and I know it, it feels 10 times cringier to not say it back, but it's going to be way worse if you say it back and you don't feel it. And then, you don't yeah. develop that feeling and then you break up with them and it's just, it got way more serious than you yeah. it ever needed to. And so I think, you know, don't say thank you, but like, no, I think just, you, I you think can be honest. Yeah. You can be honest, be like, I really appreciate, like, I mean, that's a, another way of saying, but you can say like, I really appreciate you, you 
being that vulnerable yes. with me and telling me that and like to be honest like I'm not there yet I'm not saying yes. I can't be yeah um but I'm just not there yet and so like I really appreciate if you're like patient with me as I kind of you know and put it back on yourself a little yeah because um, I think too depending on everybody's dating history and your you know your past relationships past circumstances I know some people who take a really long time to say that Mm -hmm. because they're, you know, based on whatever life experience they've had, there's a little bit more weight to it. Whereas somebody, not to say that it's not weighty for the other person, Mm -hmm. but they may not be as hesitant to share that. And so don't think, oh, because they don't say it exactly when I am telling them that, that they don't like me. They don't want right. to be with me. They've just been stringing me along. No, like there could be, you know, other factors, but I think being honest here is key. And, and, and I think if someone does tell you that they love you and you don't feel it, that's a really important marker in your relationship to figure out if you do want to move forward. Because if you have any hesitation, like big hesitation i'm not saying like oh i don't like the way he chooses food um i don't know that's a big deal it is just kidding but, I mean, kind of. yeah <laughs> but you know if at that point you've really got to take some time and evaluate because he's super invested at that point yeah. and say okay could, why don't i why don't i feel this way and do i see myself getting there yeah and if the answer is no you've got to call it yeah before because it's this, not fair it's not fair to him at all and so i think now i'm not saying you've got to call it in the moment no that's not something you process in the moment that he's telling you he loves you and then you break up with him that is something out of a <laughs> out of an awful movie but yeah. at least the beginning scene of a rom-com <laughs> but um i think you you take that as a, Hey, okay. If I'm not there yet, why am I not there? Talk to somebody close to you to kind of process that with them and then figure out, okay, if I can get there, then I'm going to tell him that, that like, I just need some time. If I can't, then we've, we've got to have a tougher conversation. Well, and one thing I would add to that too is, you know, obviously we're advocating being, being honest always one. I mean, we've got this question enough to like address it. And so obviously this is, happening so one thing i would say part of how to deal with this situation is to not get yourself into it and i think speaking of being honest one of the ways you can do that i think is honestly and openly communicate about where you're at in your relationship along the way um like if you're doing that i don't think you're going to get to a place where he's telling you he loves you and he doesn't know that you're already like at that place too I think if you, you find yourself in this place, it may be a lot of times because leading up to that, there hasn't been clear communication. You haven't talked about expectations or goals or like what you're thinking, what you're feeling, where you're going with this. And so it's kind of, you know, we've talked so much about like, there's just not clarity. So I think that's the best way of dealing with this is just don't even, don't even make it to where you're in that situation. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. So we've answered y'all's questions. We're going to kind of transition a little bit here. And I will say what episode about love, anything, episode, book, TV, I don't make Christian TV shows, just kidding. Um, But what, yeah, episode about love would be complete without at least one reference to 1 Corinthians 13. I mean, duh. So we're going to do that now. Um, So if you would turn with me, (laughs) just kidding. (laughs) Turn with me in your Bibles too. (laughs) No, but if you, I, I do want to just kind of point out in as we're making this transition to like talking about okay what does biblical love look like and how as we're looking to our ultimate example of jesus what what do you look for and you know we've talked more about you know okay there's nothing in the bible about dating but there's tons in the bible about relationships and there's tons in the bible about how you approach life with your fellow brothers and sisters in christ and so it's kind of the same thing here is there's nothing in the Bible that says this is when you should tell someone you love them. And there's nothing in the Bible that says, um, well, how do I know I'm in love with this person? But there is a lot in the Bible about what love looks like. And if the things that we're about to talk about don't resonate with you and your relationship, then it's probably not love. Mm, that's a good way to put it. And so let's look at, though, in First Corinthians, it talks about love is patient love is kind. It's not jealous. It does not brag. It's not arrogant. 
It doesn't seek its own benefit. It's not provoked and on and on it goes. And so as we're kicking off here, that like, if you look at that list of things that describe love, none of them are feelings except jealousy, I guess. Yeah. And none of them are focused on you. They're focused on the other. Love is patient with the other person. Love is kind to the other person on and on it goes. They're not, it's not self-focused and it's not feeling space, which we talked about a lot at the beginning. I know these are all actions or character qualities focused on the good of someone else. And it's from a place of truly wanting to selflessly serve them, not so that you get something back. Yeah. So one, we can check off that we talked about first Corinthians 13, but two, <laughs> have that as the lens that we're looking to love. Like yeah. that's what we're looking at as we talk through the rest of this is it's not self-focused. It's not a feeling. It is something that does for other people. Yeah. So. Well, and one time I remember hearing a pastor talk about this particular chapter and he was saying, you know, these are characteristics we can look for in love, like loving another person, but ultimately like, you could go back in first Corinthians 13 and every time you see the word love replace it with God Mm. and it would be true. And so that's, you know, and that's the model that we have. That's like Bethany said, we don't have dating advice in the Bible, but we do have a lot to learn about Mm -hmm. love and love personified itself in Christ. And so, you know, sure. Love in our culture and our, you know, on this planet is advertised as a feeling, but we all know feelings change and you can't trust your feelings because they're fickle and they, you know, are up here one minute and down the next. And, you know, it's so back and forth. So how do we know that love is something other than a feeling? Like, how do we know what that should look like? Well, we look to scripture and we look to Christ and we look to the example he set And we look to the father and what, you know, how he showed us love um, and continues to show us love every single day. And we have that luxury of, you know, I talked about at the beginning, I can't give you a 14 point list of how, you know, you love your other, you know, your significant other, but I can give you verse after verse and passage after passage of what biblical love looks like. And for someone who likes concrete lists. Um, I really appreciate that. (laughs) And I know a lot of you are that way too. And so I think that's how we wanted to kind of close this episode with, you know, Christmas coming up. And like I said, you know, this is the greatest act of love that's ever been demonstrated is that Christ came down as a baby to, you know, live a sinless life in an imperfect world so that he might take the place for our sins and our punishment that we could have a personal relationship with him and spend eternity with him. And there's nothing greater than that kind of love. And so that's what we want to close with today is looking at what are those characteristics of Christ's love and what can we learn from him about love that we can apply to our earthly relationships, including our dating relationships. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's look now at some characteristics of God's love for us. Um, and a lot of those are seen in him giving Jesus. Like that's where a lot of this is going to be seen too. But so the first thing when we're thinking about biblical love is that it is freely given. Um, in first John three, when it talks about, see what, see what great love the father has lavished on us. It's not something that you get just enough to, you know, squeak by and that's it. Like it is lavished on us and it, but then it goes on to say that we should be called the children of God. That is, that's the, the ultimate there. Yeah. Is he has poured his great love on us to redeem us. And so there is a redemptive quality to love. Now, don't hear me say that I'm saying you're going to go, you know, save someone based on your love. That's not the point. But there is a redemptive quality to loving someone biblically because it points them back to Jesus. Yeah. It points them back to him and what he has done. And because your love looks like his love. And so there is a redemptive quality to that, I think. Um, So that's the first one is that it is freely given to us. Yeah. And I think in addition to it being, you know, freely given, Christ-like love freely forgives too. Mm. I think 
I'm personally tempted to when so like I'm like so they need to come back and grovel and apologize and, and then I'll think and then I'll it. think about it and I'll let them sit in it a little bit so they know <laughs> that I'm mad I'm gonna pout it's like no I love you so when you hurt me which is so mind blowing to me when you really think about it how Christ died even just like making it selfish for a second he died for me knowing I was not obviously born when he died he knew every little stupid hurtful awful thing I was going to do in my entire lifetime and he still died and he did that for every single human being and I get mad when someone does something that hurts me that I wasn't even expecting like I didn't know they were gonna do that I don't get into relationships yeah with the thought of oh this person's gonna hurt me now if you get realistic you know they're going to if you get close to them but you don't go in with that expectation. You don't go dwelling on that. But, and I don't know how it's going to happen. But he knew, oh, Kristen would disobey me here. Kristen would do this. Kristen would not listen to me here after I told her this 14 times in two weeks. You know, like, <laughs> and he still was so forgiving. And it wasn't dependent on, like, he still forgives me even when I'm, reluctant to apologize and to ask for forgiveness and to repent like obviously those things and those are things I can only do because of the Holy Spirit I can't even do that on my own and in my own flesh and so that's something we can model when it comes to our earthly relationships is are we forgiving the people we love because we love them yeah not because they apologized 14 times and they got us an I'm sorry present and they promised to never do it again, even though we know they're going to. And <laughs> no, it's not dependent on what they do. It's hey, because I think kind of, and this is kind of what you were saying a second ago, but like forgiveness is not done for the sake of just forgiving. It's, it's to restore the relationship. Like you, when yes. there's bitterness and you know, guilt and all of those things that are sitting in a relationship your relationship isn't going to thrive it's right. that's going to stunt it from growing so there's got to be forgiveness that's happening a lot in relationships and so you're forgiving that person because you want to be in a right relationship with them mm-hmm. and that comes from loving that person you know I don't like tension no one likes conflict like you don't want to <laughs> yeah. sit there and be like I don't want to be mad at you for four more days you may <laughs> think you do to prove a point but <laughs> right. you don't and so you're forgiving that person because you want the, your relationship to be okay again. Mm-hmm. And you want it to grow. You want it to thrive. You want it to, you know, just continue progressing and not be set back yeah. because you're, you know, you're withholding forgiveness. Yeah. And I think there's an element of it too that your forgiveness, like you said, is motivated by your love for that person. But I think in a bigger way, it should be motivated too by your love for the Lord. Mm. He's told us to forgive and and because he forgave us. Right. And, and so you look at it and say, you know, like you were talking about, look at all that I have been forgiven. Who am I to, yeah. Be annoyed at the way you chew your food. Yeah. Or, (laughs) you know, I asked you to do this and you didn't or the way you talk to me or whatever, because some of that comes back to a pride of, well, I just, I'm too good to be treated like this. Mm. Um, and so I think having that right perspective on God's love for us and what we have been forgiven makes it so much easier to then in turn forgive someone else. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that kind of ties into the next characteristic of Christ's love we wanted to talk about was, that it's, you know, this love is not contingent on anything we do for Christ. Like I said a second ago, yeah, I can't even do anything worthy out of my own flesh. Mm-hmm. Like scripture says that anything we try to do is like filthy rags. Like that's the best we can do. And we, you know, I think a lot of uh, Christians forget that verse or try to like push that off into the corner <laughs> yeah. and sweep it under the rug of like, oh Lord, look at all the wonderful things I'm doing for you. And they get, no, like <laughs> your best will never be good enough. And yet he still loves you the way he does. And he loves you unconditionally and so much more than you could ever imagine. And so, and that's, that's the thing I think that maybe we should have said this at the beginning, but when you, when it comes to earthly relationships, when you really love somebody, there's, 
obviously we can't perfectly unconditionally love somebody, but there's an element of it that becomes unconditional of, Hey, I like, yeah, you're probably going to, you know, you're going to get on my nerves or you're going to do something that hurts me, or you're going to say something that bothers me or, you know, something's going to happen, but I still love you and I still want to have a relationship with you. And so there's, you know, nothing, there's not a whole lot you can do to change that. And I think that when you get to that point, I think that's where you're starting like, oh, I do really love this person. Mm-hmm. Cause it's not just like, oh, if they quit making me feel this way, or if they quit doing these things for me, or if they, you know, don't act like this anymore, then peace out. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And well, it goes back to the whole thing of an unconditional love like that one is only possible because of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Because, it, because you wouldn't be thinking that way if you weren't looking to serve and commit, like going back to, it's not a feeling. Yeah. Um, because when the feeling wears off, then, then you are looking for this performance based. Well, I'm going to love you because you did these things to make me feel the way I want to feel. Yeah, exactly. And that's, yeah, that's not good. (laughs) No. Well, and I think going back to that moment I described earlier with the Mac and cheese and the, you know, it (laughs) was like when he said that, it meant more to me because I knew there was nothing about it that I had just, Mm -hmm. I hadn't done anything great for him in that moment. I hadn't like even made myself look that great. Like there was (laughs) nothing quote unquote special. Right. And yet he said that and it meant more. Yeah. And so on a grander scheme, when we look at Christ, like we came to the table with nothing to offer on our own. And yet he loves us so much and so unconditionally. And so, um, completely that I mean I, there's no way we can match that but it's a great example for us to have of mm-hmm. hey it doesn't matter what this person does for and I think you said it earlier like as soon as all of you know if you love them because of the way they look or the things they do or the money they make or the you know romantic dates like what happens when all that fades and what happens when it all goes away if that's what your love's based on and it's totally conditional then yeah it's gonna dissolve yeah i mean in that in that instance you really love yourself Mm -hmm. because you love what they can do for you yeah exactly exactly so yeah that the factor that it's just it's not contingent on anything we do for christ like our our love for others shouldn't be contingent on what they do for us or how they make us feel and then another thing and this is, I think, the biggest difference when it comes to talking about biblical love versus love that our mm-hmm. culture talks about is that it produces action. You, you know, you can see that you love the person. That's what when you start, you know, well, I'll give this example. When me or any of my siblings have been in a serious relationship and we start doing things that we wouldn't normally do, like we get up early. Or Kristen goes hiking. Or I go hiking. Which is oh, yet to happen. I mean, don't, it don't hasn't worry. happened. No, thank the <laughs> Lord. Um, or, you know, you go places you wouldn't normally go or you go do things that you would be like, oh gosh, this is awful if I had to do this by myself, but you love the person and they want to do it. So you, and my mom always says, like, well, that's love for you <laughs> because it, it, it's shown by action. And I've talked about on here before on my list, how I want to be with a guy who has an obvious relationship with the Lord. What does that mean? It shows their actions. It's not just lip service of, Oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Cause you can sit there and say to somebody, Oh, I love you all you want to. But if your actions don't portray yeah. that, then it's just lip service at that point. And you know, you think about John three sixteen, the most famous scripture verse of all time you know, for God so loved the world that he gave, like that's an action. He gave his only son, this thing that was so important to him and the person that he loved more than, and, and part of himself. And I totally, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and try to explain the Trinity to you because I don't even <laughs> totally comprehend it, but he gave out of his love. There's action there. And he, you know, you read through the account of Jesus's life and just scripture in general and how God took care of his people and how Jesus cared for people while he was here and just all the things that God has done throughout history. Like there was always action. It wasn't just like he was this distant God that said, Oh yeah, I love y'all. Good luck. You know, 
living on earth mm-hmm. and I'm just going to stay up here until you get up here with me. Like, no, there was always action and care. And so when we love somebody, if we want to love like Christ, we've, our love has got to be backed by action. It's mm-hmm. got to produce action that shows how we actually feel. Yeah. Well, and I think too, it's not always action how do I say it's not always action that's beneficial to the giver Mm -hmm. um and one verse that always comes to mind is in Isaiah 53 where it talks about I think it's verse 3 where it talks about Jesus being acquainted with grief and you know we a lot of times it's easy I guess to think through the life of Christ and the great display of love that the cross was and trust me I am not diminishing that But I think sometimes it's easy to think of, you know, Jesus just went about life and then he got to that, you know, the week before he went to the cross and it was kind of rough. But that wasn't the case. Like he was not, you know, there's times in scripture where it talks about, well, they picked up stones to stone him, but it was not his time, you know, or, you know, he was not the the most well-liked person everywhere he went all of the time. And you know, that verse talks about he was acquainted with grief and the Greek word there is to know, it means it it means to know by experience. And so he was acquainted with grief. He was acquainted with suffering, but he loved his children. He knew where this was all leading. And so he took that action anyway, out of love, knowing it was detrimental to him physically here on earth to his human self. It was not something that was necessarily beneficial to him in that moment from that standpoint. But he did it anyway. And I think there's a huge lesson to be learned in that. Um, And I'm not saying you love someone if your life is miserable all the time. Hear me. But it doesn't mean that something is wrong. If there are periods where you are the one doing the serving, you are the one who is giving of yourself and maybe there's not as much being given in return. That's what love is. Yeah. Well, and you want to be with somebody who, you know, will do the same for you absolutely. when the tables are turned and not because it's all about you, but it's, you know, that's give and take. Yeah. And so there's this, this sense of like, okay, yeah, he's going through a really hard time right now and he doesn't have a whole lot to give, but I do. And yeah. so I love him and I want to give out of that love and serve him out of that love and take care of yeah, him out of that love. Not expecting him to do something yeah, for you. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, if that love is reciprocated, then hopefully if, I mean, I hope the tables don't turn and you get in, but we're all human. We're going to get into those seasons where you don't have a lot to give and you're stretched thin and you're, you know, stressed or tired or you're going through something tough and he becomes that for you. And because you're both trying to model what that Mm -hmm. Christ-like love looks like in the sense that this is not always about me and it doesn't always have to be in the moment equally, you know, felt or given. They're going to be, you know, overall you would hope to look at your relationship and think like, okay, this balance out, balances out. There's not one person that's always giving and one person that's always taking But it doesn't always have to be balanced in the moment. And I think we get really bogged down with that of, oh, well, I did this for you, so you need to do this for me. Or Mm -hmm. I, like, I treated you this way, so you need to treat me this way right back. And it's like, it may not all happen right then and there. But you're looking for that across the board of your relationship. Okay, so last thing to kind of sum up here. And I I think this is, this is not going to just be something that applies to We're talking about being in a dating relationship, but this is outside of romantic love. This is just love in general. Um, Is as you look at Christ's love for us and God's love for us, it is characterized, like Christ's life here on earth is characterized by service, by serving other people and by seeking their good, which he knew ultimately was to know him, to serve and follow him. And that's what mattered more than anything, was serving the people he, you know, He humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross. Like, that's the kind of humility our Savior showed. So how much more so should we be serving each other and looking for their good? That should characterize your love for other people, is sacrificially serving them and seeking their good, which their ultimate good is to know Jesus, to follow him, and 
to give him glory. And so as you're going through trying to decide whether you love your neighbor, whether you love your boyfriend, whether you love your parents, those two things should be what characterize that most all of the time. Yeah, absolutely. And the feelings and everything else will follow along after that. Mm -hmm. Amen. I have nothing to add. That was beautiful. The resident closer once again. (laughs) Doesn't just close out the episode, but closes out the season. Oh, yeah. Season's done. Season's done. (gasps) Season seven, y'all. Oh, that's kind of sad. In the books, it's always so like bittersweet at the end. It is you guys i mean we'll but be around we'll be around for 12 days straight you're not well, gonna, you're we probably gonna be we sick of us miss you yet <laughs> they'll be like oh christmas eve thank the lord i get a two-month break but, oh man oh man okay well i guess we'll close it out there yeah thank you guys so much for being here for being here this episode this season all the seasons we love you guys we look forward to getting back at it next season but yes we will have 12 days of couch cast starting on Monday. So check back in there. We'll drop them every day leading up to Christmas Eve. We hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas. You can take some time, slow down, reflect on what Christmas really means. Maybe have a cookie or two while you're doing it. Or six. Or six. It's Christmas. Um, spend some time with friends and family. And we will be doing the same. So until next time, I'm Bethany. And I'm Kristen. And this is Looking for the Middle.